mission at InfoWars.com is to audit the Fed, abolish the Fed, restore the Constitution, abolish the TSA, restore the Second Amendment, restore the Constitution, restore the Republic. And if you believe in those goals, then it is your free will, responsibility, and honor to spread the word about our operation and to donate to the 2011 money bomb. For many years, I tried to basically stay small, make my films, do my radio show, but it grew and grew and grew. Think about how a money bomb that listeners started four years ago led to us being able to move into this bigger office. A later money bomb helped us expand into the empty warehouse next door. And in the last year, we have built the TV studios and put the equipment in and are now doing a nightly news show every night at seven o'clock that we're now beta testing and getting ready for television. Right now going out to members at prisonplanet.tv and then reaching millions as it spills out onto YouTube and other systems. Help us go to the next level. Not reaching 15 million a week, but reaching 30, 40, 50 million a week. Our growth curve is exponential, but we need to hit our afterburners and turbocharge. History is happening now. The war for human liberty against total dehumanization is on now. Join us Thursday, November 3rd at Infowars.com. We're going to have a 24-hour-plus live transmission with guests and interviews starting at 11 a.m. and running into my next radio show the next day. We're going to have a huge lineup of liberty-loving patriots from all over the world joining us. It's going to be amazing. And this money bomb is going to have a lot of new things added to it that's going to make it even more powerful than past years. So please, donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb or simply spread the word about the money bomb. Stand with InfoWars.com and my incredible crew and all of our other supporters and help us get the word out even more. The ball is in your court. The rest is up to you. It's InfoWars Money Bomb 2011, November 3rd. It kicks off 11 a.m. Visit the website at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb. Welcome, my friends. Welcome, fellow liberty lovers and truth seekers. It is another edition of Truly Alternative Media, teleprompter free. It's InfoWars Nightly News. We have reporter and investigative journalist, filmmaker Dan Dix joining us from Toronto, Canada to give us his view on the Occupy Wall Street movement coming up in the second half of this transmission this evening. We have unprecedented attacks on free speech, open calls where the federal government is telling Google and YouTube to take down videos, quote, critical of the government. Google has now gone public with the communist Chinese style uh, orders that are completely uh, lawless. We have mainstream media calling for forced sterilization and abortion. Uh, this is even starting to freak me out, and I've been expecting all of this. but. It's one thing to know it's coming, another thing to see it on our doorstep. And I want to just say here at the onset of this transmission, it's time, folks, to appreciate what we got left for the First Amendment and realize a lot of people died to give us this. A lot of people died fighting King George for free speech, and a lot of people died along the way. This was all paid for, and we've paid for it with our blood, sweat, and tears, and hopefully we'll have to pay for it with our lives. But... If that's the cost, then that's the cost, because we cannot let our children be slaves. Uh, this fight that our ancestors, no matter where you came from in the world, have gone through, it's the same fight 
that humanity's always dealt with, control freak criminals, and it's here now. And I want to just make an announcement to PrisonPlanet.tv viewers because you're really the people that do care the most to be subscribers and supporters and uh, who, who pay to see this first and know that we're putting it out on YouTube and everywhere else afterwards and care about funding that message. I just want to thank all of you for your support and remind you that not only does every membership, five ninety five a month, really signify six memberships because because we allow folks and want folks to to use that username and passcode and share it with their friends and family. You can be logged on with the same username and passcode. Six people can. That's what we have it set up uh, set as right now. It's not just that. Now for the first time in eight and a half plus years of PrisonPlanet.tv, we are offering a 15-day trial subscription at PrisonPlanet.tv. And uh, your friends, your family, your neighbors, if you can afford it, buy them memberships. Put it in an email, the username, passcode. Tell them about PrisonPlanet.tv. Very easy to log on. Very easy to watch the rebroadcast, the live shows. My eight and a half years of films that have been posted there, really 16 years of material. Uh, in the last eight and a half years, it's all been posted there. Uh, the rant section, the daily Alex Jones live radio slash TV show. So much media. No one organization with one person at the head of it is putting out this this much info. It's like my crew brought me so much material tonight. We'll be here late again. Uh, just because they've got such a passion as they discover evil, they want to expose it. They have caught and uh, they have caught and so you teleprompter free. They have caught that that same bug of liberty and freedom. Now, I just want to again add, we do have the 15-day free trial going right now, and I want to ask you to please spread the word on that uh, for folks that can't afford $5.95 a month. Here's a 15-day free trial at PrisonPlanet.tv that we're going to run uh, through at least into the end of November, maybe even into December right now. Again, PrisonPlanet.tv. Okay, let's go ahead and launch uh, into the news. This first piece I thought about not airing yesterday. In fact, yesterday I decided at first not to play this. I read um, the writer's uh, analysis of it, but I, I didn't show the video. You know what? It's not obscene to show you what war really is. It's obscene to glamorize it like a John Wayne movie and not be honest. And so we're going to show you this video here. And believe me, this, this is nothing compared to some of the videos. This is the recipe for success. This is the 40,000 dead conservatively, most of them women and children. This is the carpet bombing and leveling of major cities and towns in Libya and foreign al-Qaeda forces coming in to the country. So, so I want to read this as I did last night, but then accompany it with the video. And I know a lot of families watch the show every night. If you do have children with you, you, you might want to have them turn away. Or perhaps you should have them watch it so that when an army recruiter comes to try to get them to be involved in war, they understand the truth. Look, if you're actually being attacked, you'll know it's a righteous war, and then it's got to happen. But these drones killing up to 200 people at a pop, and the Pentagon says it's worth it to kill 200 people if you kill one bad guy who they say is a bad guy. No judge, no jury. This is dehumanizing everybody. It's one thing to have war when somebody assaults you, and it's right there face to face. Uh, but, but this whole system of cowardly drones expanding, which they now say is going to be used against the American people, is incredible. So, so here's your Peace Prize winner. There he is right there with the Nobel Peace Prize. They're actually talking about giving him an, uh, another one. It's all part of the psychological warfare where war is peace. A recipe for success. The grinning shill international terrorist president of the United States talks up the regime's atrocities on a late night comedy show with the host audience and millions of people out in TV land going along with it. And he goes on to say, holy bleep. Yeah, remember Bush at that press dinner going, no weapons of destruction under here. No, none under there. <laughs> and we cut in images of dead children. Well, we just cut in images. We're going to actually show you it happening here in a moment. And again, this tears my guts out having little toddlers. But you need to see it. You need to really, really wake up and look at it and take it in. 
That's where you're going to find your humanity. They want to just sell you all this is sexy and cool. It's not sexy. To me, Obama's recipe for success looks like and sounds like a child with the lower half of his face blown off. The child's horrifying screams emerge through a pulpy, gaping cavity where his mouth and jaw used to be. You shouldn't watch the video if you know what's good for you. But it reminds me of the words of Harold Pinter, and then we'll go to the clip. It never happened. Nothing ever happened. Even while it was happening, it wasn't happening. It didn't matter. It was of no interest. The crimes of the United States have been systematic, constant, vicious, remorseless, but very few people have actually talked about them. You have to hand it to America, that is the globalist controllers that hijacked us and use us in their name while we all think we're the good guys. It has exercised a quite clinical manipulation of power worldwide while masquerading as a force for universal good. It's a brilliant, even witty, highly successful act of hypnosis. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the recipe for success. You have a foreign proxy army, Al-Qaeda in this case, come in. They start shooting police, blowing buildings up. The government fights back. And then you just bomb the entire infrastructure out, killing at least 40,000 people, bombing apartment buildings, you name it. And then you call it freedom and liberty because the Peace Prize guy's doing it. And then the very same global bankers that, that did all this come in and take control of the country and put them all in debt to rebuild the nation. So let's, 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 go, to this, let's go to the clip. I think it obviously sends a strong message uh, around the world to dictators that yeah. uh, people long to be free. And uh, they need to respect the human rights and, and the universal aspirations of people. We introduced the resolution in the United Nations that... Uh, allowed us to protect civilians in Libya when uh, Gaddafi was threatening to slaughter them. It was uh, our folks in NATO who were helping to coordinate uh, the uh, NATO operation there. And the difference here is we were able to organize the international community. We were able to uh, get the UN mandate for the operation. We were able to get Arab countries involved. And so there was never this sense that somehow we were unilaterally making a decision to take out somebody. Rather, it was the world community. And that's part of the reason why this whole thing only cost us a billion dollars right. as opposed to a trillion dollars. Not a single U.S. troop was on the ground. Not a single U.S. Uh, troop was, uh, was killed or injured. And that, I think, is... By the way, I've talked to the military people at the centers where they bring the dead bodies in. More than 50 U.S. troops were killed. You're just going to hear about them dying in car wrecks or plane crashes. Uh, so that's a lie, and it's admitted that U.S. forces with NATO forces were on the ground. So just, just more lies from this piece of trash, this murdering piece of garbage, this Hitler wannabe, this puppet minion piece of trash, Barack the mass murderer, the butcher of Libya and, so many, and Mr. Torture that all you mainline liberal scumbags love so much. Let's, let's, let's go to the little kid. Here we go. I am both surprised and deeply humbled by the decision of the Nobel Committee. The Nobel Peace Prize has not just been used to honor specific achievement, it's also been used as a means to give momentum to a set of causes. And that is why I will accept this award as a call to action, a call for all nations to confront the common challenges of the 21st century. War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. Well, there's your John Wayne for you. That's modern warfare, not, not men out on a field lining up with their swords and hacking each other up. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, it's men. It's unchivalrous, it's illegal, it's trash, it's pure wickedness. And that's what bombing cities is. That's what it is. And I heard that swollen, demonic, heroin head blob, Rush Limbaugh, earlier this year, say, hey, we're a wimp nation now. War is about bombing cities and killing everybody. 
Why? Because Hitler taught us that? He bombed cities? And so then we bombed them 10 times as bad and dropped atomic bombs on people? You know, the Japanese at Pearl Harbor, they attacked military targets. I'm not saying that was good, but it was damn military targets and men that signed up to have their jaws blown off. Not little kids like that. And all these crimes are going to be brought back on America tenfold. Don't you ever, ever think we're going to escape our karma or, or, or the fact that we reap what we sow, what comes around, goes around. Man, I am God-fearing. Let me tell you, when you look at the million-plus dead Iraqis, the biggest percentage of children, that's nothing. I could show you a carnal house, a charnel house, hours of kids, and then, but nobody gets upset about that. But when the Marines grab a puppy and rip its head off or throw it off a cliff, everybody gets mad because that's a dog. See, humans have de been dehumanized. Everybody gets upset about a dog, but the globalists are trying to take that video down everywhere. They can show you violence all over YouTube all day long. But they can show you American citizens jumping out of buildings that are burning. But they will not show you stuff like that because they want you to romanticize these sickening wars. God Almighty. And, and of course, you watch that kid's just been drug in there quickly and they hold him down and get his pulse. And the word is that kid died. Of course, the entire jaw blown away. And you can see him, ah, ah, and, and then, you know, starting to, ah, going out. And hey, they're. That's the bad guy. We're fighting Al Qaeda, but they put Al Qaeda in and gave them the missile systems now so they can now menace the United States. We're run by psychic vampires. We're run by scum. And uh, the America we're all told is so great and good, it wouldn't do anything like this. But again, the liberals love it because it's a black guy doing it. And you know, he told Congress, when Congress said, don't do this war, he said, go to hell, I got the UN. And the liberals kind of went, woo, we're bringing down America. Woo, this is fun. And all these neocon warmongers are praising it. All of them are effeminate men who never went to war. That's what's so weird about this. It's, it's all that blob, that sack of pus, Hillary Clinton, all these murdering, limp-wristed trash. And all these effeminate men who've never been in combat or never been in a war, never did anything, who get off on the power of it. They are, they are the, the anathema trash. You want to know why I do what I do? Because I realize these are a bunch of child murdering garbage. I mean, hell, they got the TSA groping your daughters and sons and getting off on hiring every pedophile they can. This is evil. This is Hitler. But it doesn't look like Hitler because people think a black guy can't be Hitler. See, you always think of the last tyranny as the way it looked before. Tyranny can come in any shape or color. It's what's in the soul. But this is just a ring wraith minion person. The point is, he's their front guy, Nobel Peace Prize. Well, you let that image of that little child with her lower mandible and their throat completely blown out. Hours of excruciating pain before the child bled out. You just remember that. You remember those tens of thousands, and they're going all over Libya, killing every black person they find, hacking them up, mass graves everywhere. That's your Al-Qaeda. And the left is like, this is a sacrament. Just, just like Margaret Sanger said, we got to pose as liberals so we can abort these black people. I mean, it's just the best bite, the cherry on top. And the, just like we told you three years ago in the Obama deception, they sent a so-called black man, a so-called black man to Africa with Africa, and now he is going to launch the war to just slaughter Africans and deindustrialize them from the north to the south. And he will be praised and he will be worshipped for it because that is what a nation of zombies loves. And you will have your pension funds taken. You will have your jobs taken as well. You will be injected with cancer viruses. Your child will have it worse than that child as they die of cancer from the vaccines you were given in the fluoride. They'll take them years of chemotherapy and vomiting and pain and crying and their hair falling out to die. It'll be even better because, see, Obama and the globalists are vampires, psychic vampires. They like all of this. They enjoy this. This is what feeds them. And, see, I can see them. And my job is to just get you to take the blinders off. And they live, it's the opposite. You know, you put the sunglasses on, you see, which is the archetype of the, of the, of the blinders. No, you take the blinders off. All right, we're going we're gonna to show you more of the war crimes in the future. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the next uh, article. 
You notice as we do these evil things, all of our blessings are leaving us. We're reaping what we sow. The dollar plunged, one of its biggest drops ever against the Swiss franc of the Japanese currency as well. Uh, and they've now announced that they're going to have derivatives. Uh, it turns out, I talked to Max Kaiser today, and it was in the, even in Bloomberg, that they are going to raise $5 trillion of taxpayer money to pay off the $100 billion debt of Greece, which most of its derivatives. You heard me, $5 trillion for $100 billion. Greece is just to blame the people. Oh, it's the people in Greece's fault. No, this is the derivative scam set up by the bankers, and the $500 billion uh, number has now grown to $5 trillion, and we're told there's a 50% haircut on bondholders. That's only on certain non-institutional bondholders. The general public will get their bonds cut in value, but the big bankers will get $5 trill on 100 bill and set up a dict dictatorship government uh, over the entire system. But again, the establishment doesn't like us in the age of cell phones uploading video of piles of dead kids. And so they're moving to start censoring the internet. And that leads us to our next article, Rogue Websites Banned. The bill has been introduced in the U.S. House. That's from French news agency. Uh, AP has it as well. And this is the exact Chinese communist model. They tried to pass this a few years ago in Australia. Did a six-month beta test. They banned hundreds of thousands of sites, dental sites, haircutting sites, you name it, just in the random banning. And... Uh, Again, the kill switch isn't across the board. They want to still pump you the propaganda. Uh, it's, it's select sites, and they say no judge, no jury. Somebody in government claims it's evil. Somebody in government claims it's hateful or violates copyright. Kind of like you get put on a no-fly list for no reason. No judge, no jury. It will now be banned if that bill passes. They've already got the power to do this in place. <clears throat> They've already had ICANN come out and say they're going to ban sites at corporate request anytime they ask for it. And, of course, they announced yesterday, Google released, and I talked about the first here, that they are just ordered by the government outside of law. And the government doesn't even mince words. They say, this is critical of the government. Take the, take the video down. I mean, if I even dare, if you're watching on YouTube or other channels right now, we probably are going to cut the little kid being murdered by the globalist out, even though you need to see that, because they'll just shut our whole channel down if we show it to you. Oh, you can watch violence all day of it if it furthers them. But, but they don't want you to see what they're doing. They don't want you to see their crimes. They want those kids to bleed to death in horrible pain, quietly like your kids they're injecting with cancer. They don't want it to be seen out there. You understand? They don't want the crimes to be seen. But you can see it at prisonplanet.tv. Uh, continuing uh, now, um, Napolitano, th this is probably one of the biggest news reports in a long time here, but it'll be reported with a whimper, not a bang, because it's just all too insane. Uh, it, it, of course, came out earlier in the year in January that this is really an Iran-Contra deal where cocaine shipped into the U.S. directly on U.S. aircraft and trains and trucks. The Border Patrol and seven other agencies are told to let it in, and then you and your family get proctology exams on the side of the road run by this master pervert herself just a minion. Now, I mean, there she is, or whatever it is. The point is, is that all of this is happening, and it came out when, when John uh, P. Holdren and, 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 and the White House regulations are and others started calling for internet censorship and things uh, to, you know, to suppress the people that, that they knew in the future, as this information began to come out, they weren't going to be able to, to, to contain the awakening. But again, I'm pontificating. It also came out that Eric Holder, uh, the Attorney General, had given press conferences. We were the first to point this out seven, eight months ago. Had said they were running Fast and Furious by name and Project Gunrunner, and that they had agents inside uh, Mexico tracking all this. But that was just their cover. They were really arming the drug gangs to knock out the other drug gangs, and that's now come out in federal court. But the point is, she has perjured herself, head of Homeland Security. Uh, the head of the Justice Department uh, has uh, perjured herself. They've all lied. And so I thought we would show you uh, a couple clips here now of them from the C-SPAN archives. But our team went in and got, so it's not just news articles 
where where it's being pointed out that they actually gave press conferences about Fast and Furious and admitted they had agents in Mexico, and then later came out and said, like Sergeant Schultz, I know nothing, said, oh, it's ridiculous, that's a conspiracy theory. Uh, I mean, of course they perjured themselves. It's come out in major papers and in the federal documents that the government's shipping drugs into the U.S. and guns to the cartels that are allied with them. But the reason they don't want to go there, as I told you six months ago, now came out last week, and we covered it here. Issa had to admit, oh, it turns out Bush was involved in this. Of course, and Clinton, and Bush Sr., and Ronald Reagan, Iran-Contra. Back to Vietnam. Our government is run by narcotics trafficking murderers who will take your pension fund and set up a federal police force to bludgeon your brains out, to protect their criminal operation. Wake up to them. They're the terrorists. They're the criminals. Get it through your head. They're people murdering kids. They're anti-American. The Vatican's calling for global government right now and global banks running everything. Figure it out. I call her evil and stuff and it's fun to hate her, but she's just some cutout suit old, old, crusty, you know, jackboot who they roll out there to lie to you and read off a teleprompter. All right, let's go ahead and go to all her lies. Here they are. When did you learn of Fast and Furious for the first time? Uh, I learned of it uh, after the death of Agent Terry. And when did you learn that gun walking was part of Fast and Furious? Uh, I would say uh, sometime between his death and the early spring. To your knowledge, is ever, has anyone ever communicated or did anyone communicate with Mexican authorities that guns were being allowed to cross our border into Mexico in contravention of their gun laws? Uh, I can only speak for uh, communications uh, that I know of, and I know of no such communications. Correct, yeah. So someone at the Department of Justice had to know about Fast and Furious for the T3 to ever have been approved. Correct. I, I just can't comment. I don't know that there was a T3 approved in Fast and Furious. If there were a T3 approved in Fast and Furious, and, and there were, the Department of Justice would have had to have known about it. Correct. I'm going to leave that for your own investigation, sir. I'm just not going to comment or go beyond what I know. And what I know is that after the death of Agent Terry, uh, uh, it, the Fast and Furious label uh, became apparent at, and we became knowledgeable about it. Um, obviously, there were problems with the operation. Obviously, it did not succeed, and, uh, and the Inspector General has that under uh, uh, investigation right now. So was it the Department of Homeland Security's policy to allow guns to go south into Mexico if they were involved in Fast and Furious? I'm looking for a yes or no. No. How is it that you can make a claim that the border is now more secure than ever, and yet the Obama administration purposely allows more than nearly 2,000 guns to be released, knowing that they're going to go to Mexico with hundreds of people killed by those weapons, two dead U.S. agents, and yet you don't even know if we've detected even one of those guns. In fact, on, on January 14th, you did detect somebody in New Mexico. There were eight guns found. They didn't even run a trace on them, and you let those guns go into Mexico. I find that absolutely stunning. And for you to have two dead agents and have never had a conversation with Eric Holder about Fast and Furious and about this earth is totally unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. How much time has expired? Do you realize the magnitude? You just saw her at a press conference and on C-SPAN admit they knew about it, then later, years later, deny it. And now I'm going to show you David Ogden, the Deputy Attorney General, David W. Ogden, doing the same thing with her at a press conference. I mean, by the way, it's Infowars.com and Paul Watson doing the research breaking this. The mainstream whore media knows all this. We were the ones pointed out in transcripts from AP two years ago that they were admitting all this in speeches when Holder was down here demonizing the Second Amendment. So we got to ban the Second Amendment, restrict it, and all this stuff because of what's happening in Mexico and our, and our Operation Gunrunner, Fast and Furious, showed this. Then he goes, I know nothing of a plan. I know nothing of Gunrunner. I, we don't have agents in Mexico. The point is, the, these are a bunch of criminal jackasses. I've had it with them. I mean, how much do we put up with from these crooks? And why do they all look like they've had sex change operations? 
I mean, uh, I can't get into the club unless I've done. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't even attack them at that level. I just can't handle it anymore. Why are we ruled by chicken neck scum that should be so easy to defeat? Why? Why is this my. Why do good people just lay down so every form of trash can run over them? Let's go to David Ogden. Let's, let's go to the next piece of trash. DOJ's Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives is increasing its efforts by adding 37 new employees in three new offices using $10 million in Recovery Act funds and redeploying 100 personnel to the southwest border in the next 45 days to fortify its Project Gunrunner, which is aimed at disrupting arms trafficking between the United States and Mexico. ATF is doubling its, its presence in Mexico uh, itself. Um, uh, from five to nine personnel working with the Mexicans specifically to facilitate gun tracing uh, activity which targets uh, the illegal weapons uh, and their sources in the United States. The uh, but our department has a very broad mission and we have to be able to multitask. Uh, and as we multitask... Pause. One pause. Just to be clear, we got a whole bunch of clips for running out of time. It's all in Paul Watson's article Napolitano knew about Fast and Furious in 09, if you want to watch the clips for yourself in their entirety. Not just the snippets we're playing on the news, but she's there being grilled saying she knew nothing. Now you see her at the press conference where this is all being admitted. But, I mean, we already have eight agencies now, it turns out, involved in this. They're shipping drugs all over the U.S. They're shipping guns all over the U.S., not just Mexico. The government runs this. It's a $500 billion industry. You got to know this chipmunk and the other ones are running it. Of course, it's 500 bill. You think that's being hidden in some crack house down the road? They allow the zombie crack houses to operate. They allow them to go to the schoolyards try to sell the stuff to your kids. They, they make it illegal so they get a higher price. And so your kids become zombies that rob houses to pay money to the chipmunk's bosses. Let's go back to the clip. The uh, things that has happened, uh, one of the changes in the threat environment has been what is going on in Mexico. How success do you expect to be in this effort to clamp down on the trafficking of power going into Mexico? Several things. Uh, one is, first of all, you've got to interdict the arms. You've got to stop them from going into Mexico. Uh, uh, we're coordinating with Mexico because they can do more uh, by way of southbound screening uh, on their side of the border. Uh, but then the Department of Justice moving uh, their agents uh, down there, uh, as David said, and increasing tracing. Uh, that will help us identify who, are, who, who is putting those arms uh, into the arms, those, those guns uh, into the arms of the traffickers uh, moving south. Uh, and uh, out of that, uh, there uh, can reasonably be seen more prosecution of actual arms dealers who are intentionally and knowingly uh, putting arms into the hands of the smugglers. Uh, so that is part. There she is saying, we're taking the guns in, we're tracing it, we got agents there. Two and a half years ago, March 24, 2009, at the press conference with the other slime bags. Yeah, yeah, we're going to go to break and come back. Um, come back with the rest of it. Stay with us. Ron Paul, a visionary who predicted the financial crisis, a leader with a plan to solve it. The Paul plan? Balance the budget. Cut a trillion dollars year one. Eliminate five federal bureaucracies. End the foreign wars and nation building. Rein in the Federal Reserve. Pay down the debt. Cut taxes to create jobs. Ron Paul, a plan to restore America now. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD Sign us under attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there, InfoWars.com. Our mission at InfoWars.com is to audit the Fed, abolish the Fed, restore the Constitution, abolish the TSA, restore the Second Amendment, restore the Constitution, restore the Republic. And if you believe in those goals, then it is your free will, responsibility, and honor 
to spread the word about our operation and to donate to the 2011 money bomb. For many years, I tried to basically stay small, make my films, do my radio show, but it grew and grew and grew. Think about how a money bomb that Listener started four years ago led to us being able to move into this bigger office. A later money bomb helped us expand into the empty warehouse next door. And in the last year, we have built the TV studios and put the equipment in and are now doing a nightly news show every night at 7 o'clock that we're now beta testing and getting ready for television. Right now, going out to members at PrisonPlanet.tv and then reaching millions as it spills out onto YouTube and other systems. Help us go to the next level. Not reaching 15 million a week, but reaching 30, 40, 50 million a week. Our growth curve is exponential, but we need to hit our afterburners and turbocharge. History is happening now. The war for human liberty against total dehumanization is on now. Join us Thursday, November 3rd at Infowars.com. We're going to have a 24-hour plus live transmission with guests and interviews starting at 11 a.m. and running into my next radio show the next day. We're going to have a huge lineup of liberty-loving patriots from all over the world joining us. It's going to be amazing. And this money bomb is going to have a lot of new things added to it that's going to make it even more powerful than past years. So please donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb or simply spread the word about the Money Bomb. Stand with InfoWars.com and my incredible crew and all of our other supporters and help us get the word out even more. The ball is in your court. The rest is up to you. It's InfoWars Money Bomb 2011, November 3rd. It kicks off 11 a.m. Visit the website at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb. And we are back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. We're seeing Occupy Wall Street really starting to enter its second month or so. And now we're seeing the police shooting people in the face with rubber bullets for no reason in California. We're starting to see the Democrats demonize them. At first, they tried to co-opt it, but that failed. The public didn't buy that Obama is anti-Wall Street corruption anti-banker corruption. The Federal Reserve got behind Occupy Wall Street, Bernanke, all of them came out and said, we agree with you. We should really raise taxes on everybody and pay it to private central banks like we're about to do in Europe. Austerity is the way. But more and more in the Fed information got out there, more and more uh, the people began to wake up. So now I'm seeing a major shift towards demonization. From my research, at the very beginning, it was the ad busters and other kind of mainline leftist connected groups that were involved at the uh, genesis of calling for Occupy Wall Street. Just a vagary to kind of get the biggest crowd they could out there. Then people showed up, a lot of them who were informed, some who weren't, a lot of students that couldn't get jobs uh, with their degrees because of deindustrialization and globalism and too much taxation. And they were told, the answer is raise the taxes. The answer is austerity. Uh, the answer is, you know, new world order. Uh, but that hasn't seemed to sell so well. And in the last month, we've seen the unions sent down and move on.org. All over the country, we, and we've gotten video of it here in Austin, um, they come up to our reporters, other reporters, or people with Ron Paul signs or Ron Paul shirts say that isn't welcome here. But everything else is. Now, they claim they're not political until it's establishment leftist stuff. In fact, I've seen reports they don't want anti-war there. Now, it's not fair, again, to just say this is all a government operation. The government, through its minions, puts the call out because they want to blame general capitalism or free market Wall Street for what they've engineered instead of the Federal Reserve. And I, of course, have had the call to go after the Federal Reserve itself because that's where the six megabanks get their political power and are posing as a federal agency and keeping their books secret. And then we can move on from there with Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, um, Citibank, 
um, and others uh, who really are the heads of the New World Order, the authors of this panopticonic control freak nightmare system. They're the folks that lobby for the wars, the cashless society, the control grid. This is the enemy of humanity. Uh, but you don't defeat them by raising taxes, which they're lobbying for, because you're never going to get those goodies, even if you are for wealth redistribution. The only chicken feed you're going to get is to make you dependent. Now, Dan Dix is just an amazing filmmaker. By the way, we carry both of his films at InfoWars.com and the online video bookstore. United, we fall. Three nations, two sides, one union, North American Union, still moving forward. I want to briefly talk to him about that tonight. And his latest film, uh, Into the Fire, uh, which looks at globalist uh, meeting uh, in Toronto, Canada. Well, Dan, it's great to have you here with us. Uh, you've been there. You heard my little breakdown. A, do you agree with it? Uh, and B, what can you add to it? Uh, yeah, I totally agree. Um, in my experience here in Toronto, um, as you said, I, you know, I, I, I was interviewing a lot of the protesters down here at Occupy Toronto, and in the beginning, I was coming across a lot of these kind of socialist, uh, anti-capitalist type protesters, um, and they were certainly beginning to have a, a loud voice in the beginning of this thing. But the more and more I speak to people down there, the more and more I'm starting to find that there are a lot of Canadians down here who are fully aware of the problem with private banks issuing currency uh, out of thin air and charging interest on it. Uh, people around here know that what we need to change is this whole system of fractional reserve lending. And people are starting to catch on to the fact that our Bank of Canada can actually print its own money interest free. However, we haven't been doing that since 1974. We've been borrowing from private banks at interest. So I, I'm starting to see some hope for the movement here a little bit because people are starting to become more aware of some of the real issues and some of the real problems that we ought to be, be focusing on. And uh, I think it's a beautiful thing to see these people coming together. You know, it's been going on for 12 days now. And uh, 12 days ago, it started off with about 10 or 15 tents down in St. James Park. And that's quickly grown to about 200 now. Uh, and looks like they're in, in it for the long run. They're going to stick with it right through the winter. Uh, so it's exciting times. Um, so I just want to continue to document this thing and make sure that it doesn't get steered into this direction, which, as you said, is going to just enslave us even further and not end up uh, helping any of the people at all. So we, we certainly have to remain vigilant and caution, cautious of that happening. Well, again, I mean, it, it, it's somewhat complex, but, but, but also simple once you get it. The establishment knows there's going to be a revolution against their corruption. They go ahead and just put out a nebulous, hey, let's occupy Wall Street. A lot of diverse groups show up. The system tries to fully co-opt it with its message of more taxes that get siphoned off uh, in, in, in banker bailouts, like a trillion dollar one we saw passed in, uh, in Europe. Uh, I mean, Greece's debt supposedly uh, 100 billion, so what's the trillion for? I mean, it's all just this backdrop that the Irish owe it, or the Americans owe it, or the Canadians owe it, or the Greeks, or the Icelanders. Every time they dig in, they find out it's the banksters. It's their derivative black hole. It's like Bernie Madoff. They should go to jail instead of this. And people who want to know why they can't get a college uh, you know, job out of college, it's because globalism has deindustrialized. But, but, but you know, the issue is now that the system has not been able to fully co-opt it, we're seeing the mainstream media, left, right, center shift to they're dirty, they're stealing, they're intense, rats, garbage. Uh, if somebody uh, gets an iPod stolen at, at an event or, or, or complains about it, it's big national news uh, to imply it's criminals that want to protest Wall Street. So now that really signifies for me the system tried to co-opt it. You know, like the Pied Piper, they called the people, but you know, the, the, but, but they were unable to control them after that. So now they're shifting to a demonization, rubber bullet in the face mode. One guy, veterans in critical condition right now, still from it, shot in the, uh, with a rubber bullet at close range. So, so, so where do you see the crackdown going uh, around the world if they can't co-opt it? Well, I've certainly been seeing the crackdown happening um, online with uh, the police cracking down on these various protests all over the states. But it's a little bit different here in Toronto. Something that is very interesting that is going on here is that the police are pretty much staying completely out of it. They're staying out of the way. They're basically allowing the protesters to march wherever they want and occupy whatever intersections they want. And I think the reason for that 
is because the police here in Toronto have a little bit of a PR problem. They're already trying to restore the public's faith in them because of the atrocities, because of the brutal things that took place at the G20 summit last summer. So I think, as I said, the police have a bit of a PR issue here. It's going to look bad on them if they crack down on people. So luckily, I suppose in that sense, it works out for the protesters. They're having free range to kind of march around the city uh, into different communities in order to uh, try to get more people to support their cause. Um, and by the way, in the last decade, Dan, as you know, there's been such an abrogation of the First Amendment here, right to assemble that you have up there under common law as well, that it's shocking when the police just act like they're in North America and not North Korea. Uh, but, but, but I agree with you. They also, at this point, just want you guys to go away. They don't want to make you look like victims. If you continue, though, I think down the road you will see some of the crackdowns. First, the demonization. Than the crackdowns. But for those that don't know, you document in your end of the fire uh, it were really first. I mean, I saw this film first, and, and then now it's been admitted in the mainstream news in Canada that you what, had police provocateurs. There's been a history of that before. There was a total color of law fraud where just basically anywhere in the city they'd say no taping, no assembly, we have a secret order. Well, the only reason it was secret is it turned out the order didn't say that. It was just made up crap. The cops were told there's a secret order, there's no freedom now. You know, kind of like Hitler. Well, it's a secret order. I'm your Fuhrer. Bow down and kiss my hind end. So, 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 so give us a report for those that don't know what we saw at the G20 because then it was the model at the G20 here, G20 in England. They killed a guy delivering newspapers to a gas station. I mean, we're seeing all over the world when the globalist banksters arrive, there's no reason for this except they want to practice globally giving the orders and watching a total crackdown, including military people in uniforms, snatching and grabbing peaceful people in Pittsburgh, arresting my reporter Rob Dew for no reason. He's having to sue them now and taking him to some gulag with people with bags over their heads. I mean, this is really a beta test to try to turn us into a fascist system, but it's the same stamp worldwide. Yeah, we saw a lot of the same kind of things here in Toronto last year, the snatch and grabs, undercover vans with uh, plainclothes police officers doing snatch and grabs. I interviewed a number of people who just had unbelievable experiences. Uh, there was an elderly gentleman um, who had his prosthetic leg ripped off by the police. They ordered him to hop to the squad car. And when he said, you know, I can't physically do that, uh, they wouldn't give his leg back to him because they said it might be used as a weapon. And so many of those stories kept coming in uh, to me. And we documented it all uh, in the film, Into the Fire. Uh, if anybody's interested in checking it out, you can definitely see it on prisonplanet.tv or you can get it from infowars.com. But we documented the whole thing. It went on for the whole weekend, and we pretty much covered everything chronologically, uh, starting all the way back from even two months before the summit even began, when we started seeing the police state kind of ramping up here in the streets of Toronto with the fences going up, with more and more police officers being in the streets. And I basically assembled a pretty solid team of about eight camera guys who uh, we were all in different positions all throughout the city uh, to make sure we could capture absolutely everything that was going on. And uh, anything we didn't capture, the good, the good people of Toronto uh, gave their footage to me and said, Dan, I, I, I like your work. I trust you're going to do good stuff with my footage. Please take it. And so uh, we put together uh, Into the Fire. Was, it was nine months in the making now, and uh, it's, it's out there online now, so if people want to see it for themselves, uh, you can check it out. Well, you're right. It is posted here at prisonplanet.tv that brings folks InfoWars Nightly News, and the DVD is also available at InfoWars.com. People should purchase the DVD, not just watch it here at prisonplanet.tv or uh, on the web in general, because obviously you want it to be out there for free for everybody, but at the same time, Filmmakers can't continue to do what they're doing without support. We're not like the government that forcibly takes your money and then uses it against you. And I would add that, of course, you head up Press for Truth, a team of videographers, investigative journalists, and political activists who do their best to expose the global elite and their plans for a new world order, really the new true media. And uh, it is uh, great to uh, have Dan with us. He got the idea to kick off this alternative media group. Uh, based in Toronto in 2006, and since then it's reached millions of people. And none of us are going to defeat the globalists by ourselves. But it's all of us as individualists acting that will collectively 
not globalist collectivism, but true individual collectivism, our individual actions with, with shared ideas and beliefs that will defeat the globalist collectivist hive Borg, the, uh, their fascist corporatist Borg. Now, Dan, I, I know you're watching what's happening here in the U.S., but we have this idea it can't happen here, and that's why America's become so incredibly wicked. That is the forces that run it. But uh, last night I covered it. Earlier in the evening I went over it. We're now learning, as Google is doing this transparency data dump, that the police ordered videos taken down off Google because it, quote, showed brutality, in their words, and Google did it. The, the federal government ordered videos taken down that were, quote, critical of government. Uh, and now they have this internet kill switch bill uh, that doesn't just let the president kill the whole internet if he wants, but a la carte, any site seen as a rogue. And you read it, no judge, no jury. They just say it's rogue. They say it's illegal. They say it violates a copyright. You don't get a hearing. You don't get any process. Your site's gone blacklisted. This is the Chinese model. But they're reporting it in mainstream news like, we're going to get Chinese systems to keep you safe. And cybersecurity, the Pentagon's going to run it. Uh, wow. I mean, it's, it's even I can't believe we're here watching this happen. I hope people realize that they better get your physical address, my physical address. Uh, they better go to Infowars.com and sign up for the Infowars Insider with the email, because we've been told by experts that's the real way to, in the future, try to still circumvent them from anywhere with, you know, information in an email way, where they may not even be able to see our films in the future. Uh, we already had the Federal Reserve two weeks ago threaten YouTube to take down uh, a, a video critical of them. Uh, and that's still pending in, in the YouTube uh, uh, hearing system of uh, review board. They said it would be, uh, be reviewed in just a few days. It was just still pending. So, so, so the system is scared. It knows we now see them. It knows Dan Dix and Alex Jones and a million others like us, black, white, old, young, Hispanic, Asian, uh, female, male, whatever. They know worldwide those sunglasses are going on to use a they live analogy. And the system is saying, hey, we look, we're criminals. They're going to bring us to justice. We're going to be in jail like Ken Lay or Bernie Madoff. Go ahead and bring in tyranny. I mean, all people understand, oh, they won't try tyranny or really hardcore tyranny because, because it'll be too obvious. They don't have a choice. Do you understand, folks? It's done. It's set. I believe the stage terror attacks are right around the corner. Bioweapon releases, I can see all the preparation, Dan. Everybody, though, even people that didn't used to believe me, now say in their gut they can see it. I mean, now it's so naked. This isn't Hitler 1933. It's Hitler 1940. You know, this isn't the Soviet Union 19, 1918. This is Soviet Union, you know, 1950s. People really now, well, I mean, I'm ranting. What's your worldview on all this? Well, absolutely, Alex. I think we're seeing, um, you know, in, in the last five years or so, there's been a massive awakening happening. And I think what we're seeing now is the culmination of that. People who have been waking up to these issues are now getting to the point where they're ready to get active. They're ready to get out in the streets. They're ready to meet like-minded people and begin to work together in solidarity to try to build a better future. And you're absolutely right. I think um, the establishment is running scared. They're, they're, they're worried um, that this uh, movement may gain some momentum and be uh, quite a problem for them. Um, so we're just going to have to continue, continue our efforts and uh, just hope that this thing, as I said before, gets steered in a direction which is going to benefit us and not, and not the establishment. So I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for the future here, Alex. Well, I think you just said it right there. Uh, the system knows there's an awakening. They're trying to co-opt it. And if they can't, they're going to rubber bullet it. But people that work for the system, they're being destroyed by this. It's the law of diminishing returns. I mean, this, this new world order is going straight to hell. Dan, give me your boil down view of what the new world order is, what its goals are from your research. I mean, I mean really, uh, you've got the soapbox for the last three, four minutes here. Yeah, well, the, the whole plan of this New World Order, which has been going on for centuries now, has always all been about uniting everything into one so they can set up their world government, their one world cash system, even a one world religion. So it's all about uniting people under this singular umbrella. And I think that's where we need to be careful with this occupation movement, because when things begin to move on to a global level, we have to remember, this has been the goal of the New World Order for centuries now, is to unite everybody under the singular umbrella. And in order to do that, people have to be on the same page uh, mentally, spiritually, and they, you know, that's, 
they have to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I think that are, are the goals. And they're, they're even starting to uh, suggest these types of solutions to these problems that are being raised. Um, people are saying, you know, what we need is a world central bank and a global authority to see over all these financial institutions. So they've been setting it up for years now. They've got their ducks in a line and uh, they're getting ready to take that next step to try to bring everything together. But as I said, there's a huge awakening happening. People are beginning to become aware of this fact. They realize that they're not getting the truth from the mainstream media, and they're beginning to look to alternative in sources for information like Infowars.com, like PressForTruth.ca, and people are hungry for the truth because they know something's wrong. They know something is fundamentally flawed with the system. And the beautiful thing about this, Alex, is people are beginning to get out, get in the streets, get active, and work together to change this world and make it a better place so we can bring this whole new world order and it can come crashing down. Well, you're right, Dan. And look, you had the Vatican on Monday come out and call for a global government and a global bank. Well, that's exactly what the private banking hedge that created the derivatives have been calling for. And the VAT, the sales taxes, the global carbon taxes. And now they're going to hold the world hostage until the nations give over all their sovereignty. And it's not some loving Star Trek world government. This is a tyrannical, oppressive, eugenics-based world government. And, and to see the Vatican that was so heavily involved in the Treaty of Rome to begin the establishment of the EU in 1957, uh, to, now, to now see you know, even their, their big council say, you banks are bad, and the way we're going to punish you is a big bank of the world to run everything and stop you banks from doing this. That's the very bank of the world they've been proposing now for three years, which I read about from the Trilateral Commission saying they would do all of this in the mid-70s. And that's what's so frustrating. We didn't just guess what they were going to do. And wow, good, good guess. This has all been stated. We don't just say they put sterilants in vaccines. It's the Rockefeller Foundation documents we showed last night. I mean, it, it, but, but people are still... People always ask me, why, 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 Alex? You know, I wouldn't do something like that. You wouldn't. They, they can't get, the, well, that, well, you wouldn't kill kids and bury them in your backyard either. But people get caught all the time doing that. I mean, you know, they show these videos of like a woman in England walks over to a cat and she, you know, hits it just, just for no reason. It's out standing there being nice. She starts petting it. She does something mean to it. You know, why do people do that? It's like, well, why? Because they're crazy, because they're control freaks. The point is, look at history. This is the norm. Stop thinking it can't happen, because your denial, your ignorance of history out there, and I don't even mean our viewers, but, but, but those that this is passed on to, this is what is allowing this to manifest. This is what is allowing this to take place. It's like somebody who smokes five packs of cigarettes a day and wonders why they get lung cancer when they're 45. You know, they just all act, I'm not going to get lung cancer, that's other people. Now, this, this world has cancer. It's called global tyrants. So, again, D Dan, in closing, what can you say to the awakening process? Because, yeah, just because somebody wakes up doesn't mean they've gotten their bearings yet. And so that's why the, the establishment is like, you've woken up. We're the big banks, Federal Reserve. We agree with you, Occupy Wall Street. We want to raise taxes on rich people. That's anybody making more money than you. It won't be getting rid of NAFTA or GATT that'll get you a job. It won't be devaluing the currency we're doing that's the problem. It's anybody with more money than you. Let's take their money, okay? I mean, that's, that's where this is at. Yeah, I think uh, what a lot of people need to do is to continue to network uh, with each other. And um, when you're starting out and trying to get active, it's good to go online and try to find certain groups that are involved with the issues that you're interested in. Um, go on Facebook, check out the different groups, uh, look at the meetup.com and try to find like-minded people uh, that you can uh, eventually meet and begin uh, to work with them. Um, and then, uh, of course, you know, I always feel it's important to arm yourself with the greatest weapon in this info war, which is the camera. And um, anytime you're at any of these events, and we are living in amazing times right now, pretty much everybody has a camera in their pocket uh, with their smartphones and cell phones and so forth. Um, so it's an incredible time to expose these uh, evil, wicked elites that are doing their 
dark deeds in the dark, and we can expose that now by getting together, staying active, getting out in the streets, joining together, and of course, documenting the whole thing and uh, so that you can show the world what's happening and our numbers will continue to grow uh, in, this, in this movement that is, is getting, it's getting huge, Alex. All right, Dan Dix, God bless. Good to talk to you from Canada. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. And I will close with what I said at the beginning of the transmission and what I said with Dan just now, because it's the heart of the matter. If you walk away from this with anything, it should be this in my humble view. We are at a crossroads. The system is coming in. Their demonization, their attacks, their balkanization, their cast Sunstein, cognitive infiltration, it's not working anymore. And so the system is now openly moving to start censoring and shutting down the alternative media because we are supplanting their psychological dictatorship with an open, free debate. So do not behave and act like you're always going to have this free internet. Use it now. Be like Dan Dix. Get a camera. Go out. Start shooting mini documentaries or, or just turn your camera on and get on YouTube. If you're 75 years old, 80 years old, don't know how to use it, get your son to come by or your daughter. Or if you're 12 years old, you know, uh, your parents don't want you on the internet. Just, just do audio blogs with images. G get out there on the internet where there are so many voices and so many people. I mean, now they've had for several years, and they're saying they're going to use this, where whole individuals are blacklisted. If they claim you've ever copyrighted in French with no proof, no conviction, your voice will be banned from YouTube and the web. And they already have it where if you use a small clip of news when you upload to YouTube, it's already encoded through YouTube to recognize it and flag it and block your video. Even if you're showing a 20-second clip and critiquing it, which is clearly fair use and 100% protected. I mean, a new dark age is, is, is attempting to dawn. We need to, to, to keep the sun from setting on liberty and freedom. And that's where we come to the money bomb. When you buy bumper stickers, books, videos at InfoWars.com, that supports us. But in this depression, people aren't buying many books or videos. Um, when you support our sponsors, that supports us. Uh, when you donate to us, that supports us. And the establishment's done a mind trick on people. They've convinced us it's okay for government to take our money and forcibly at the barrel of a gun and then use it against us. Or it's okay for big mega bankers who've stolen their money uh, through bailouts to, to fund you know, NPR, NPR to beg for money. But then if Infowars.com comes out and says, hey, once a year to buy equipment to hire more people and you've seen us grow, we have a money bomb. We need to raise $500,000 with this year's money bomb. And I've barely promoted it. I probably engaged in one-tenth of the promotion that I normally uh, would because I'm so busy doing other things. It's next Thursday into Friday, 24-hour broadcast. They're lining up just a who's who of awake and enlightened and informed, beautiful people that are going to be joining us. We're going to have some surprises as well. Darren's trying to get me to do a live uh, office chair race around the office. Uh, so, I mean, maybe some ridiculous. I don't know if we want to do some Benny Hill stuff. Who knows, though? You know I, I'm a sucker for funny stuff. The point is that's coming up, but we, we always try to raise money beforehand. And our goal last year was $100,000 before it kicked off, so we could try to get to our goal of half a million. We didn't quite get there, 430-something thousand. We have raised a fraction of that 100,000 that we normally raise right before the event. So please uh, go to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com and donate today if you believe in what we're doing, or spread the word about the Money Bomb. Get our promo videos concerning it off the YouTube channel or wherever you find them and get them out to others, or just spread the word about the free podcast, the radio show, and all we do. Don't, don't forget you can share your passcode and username with up to six people can be simultaneously logged on uh, at prisonplanet.tv. That's our goal to reach people. And we're reaching about 15 million one way or another every week. And I want to, in a year or so, have that at 30 million because the time is short. The system, the establishment knows that. All right, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. Great job with the crew. Lord willing, we'll see you back here tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central. Our mission at InfoWars.com is to audit the Fed, abolish the Fed, restore the Constitution, abolish the TSA, restore the Second Amendment, restore the Constitution, restore the Republic. And if you believe in those goals, then it is your free will, responsibility, and honor to spread the word about our operation and to donate to 
the 2011 money bomb. For many years, I tried to basically stay small, make my films, do my radio show, but it grew and grew and grew. Think about how a money bomb that listeners started four years ago led to us being able to move into this bigger office. A later money bomb helped us expand into the empty warehouse next door. And in the last year, we have built the TV studios and put the equipment in and are now doing a nightly news show every night at 7 o'clock that we're now beta testing and getting ready for television. Right now going out to members at PrisonPlanet.tv and then reaching millions as it spills out onto YouTube and other systems. Help us go to the next level. Not reaching 15 million a week, but reaching 30, 40, 50 million a week. Our growth curve is exponential, but we need to hit our afterburners and turbocharge. History is happening now. The war for human liberty against total dehumanization is on now. Join us Thursday, November 3rd at Infowars.com. We're going to have a 24-hour-plus live transmission with guests and interviews starting at 11 a.m. and running into my next radio show the next day. We're going to have a huge lineup of liberty-loving patriots from all over the world joining us. It's going to be amazing. And this money bomb is going to have a lot of new things added to it that's going to make it even more powerful than past years. So please, donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb or simply spread the word about the Money Bomb. Stand with InfoWars.com and my incredible crew and all of our other supporters and help us get the word out even more. The ball is in your court. The rest is up to you. It's InfoWars Money Bomb 2011. November 3rd, it kicks off 11 a.m. Visit the website at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, InfoWars.com forward slash Moneybomb.